So, you know, functions just like life has, have their sort of ups and their downs. And the ups are maxima, the maximum value that a function takes nearby, and the downs are the, the minima. So let's take a closer look at maxima and minima and see what they're all about. First of all, let's just remember that if we have a maximum or minimum somewhere, let's say at x equals c, then in fact c is a critical point. Now what's a critical point again? Well, remember that a critical point is a point where the function either, well, oop, the derivative is 0, f prime of x is 0 there, or, do you remember what the other thing is? So I'll put a little question marks here for now. Let's see if we can come back to it. But let's take a look at a function, see if we can figure it out. So critical point, this is a critical point. This is a critical point. Isn't this great? The critical point is a critical point. <laughs> All right, take a look. Here's a function. Let's take a look at the slopes. Well, here we see a minimum. And notice that the derivative is 0 there. The slope of the tangent line is 0. So that's one of these guys. Good. Now that's a maximum up here. And what happens? Well, look, the, the, the derivative actually is undefined. right? And so in fact, that's right, critical points, where f prime of x equals 0 or where f prime of x does not exist. Those are the places that we have critical points. And if we have extrema, they're going to happen at critical points. So check these out. Here, these low points are called minima. And there are two types of minima that we could have. We could have something that's called a local minima. That's just nearby, it's the lowest point. So if you pour a little water there, that's the point where the water would settle. Maxima, well, that's high points. Those are the peaks. If you turn the function upside down and poured water, that's where the water would settle. Or conversely, it's the point where if you pour water, all the water would go away from that one point. That's what it means. So it's the highest point, that's a maximum. Lowest point, that's the minimum. And these are sometimes called local. Now what does local mean? Well, local means that you are the rock bottom lowest around that point. Who knows what's happening at the whole function? We're just focusing on locally, like your neighborhood. Right? So f of x is a local maximum at c if, in fact, the function is always less than or equal to f of c for all the x's nearby c. The local means nearby c. Uh, f of x is a local minimum if in fact at c if, in fact, that is the lowest point nearby c. So the function is as low as it can be. The water would settle right there at that particular x value. Okay? So, that's to be compared to what's called the absolute max and the absolute min, which means don't think locally, now think globally. And in fact, sometimes these are actually called global max, global mins. So uh, f of x has an absolute maximum at c if, in fact, that is the highest value the function attains for all the values. So that is the absolute rock highest. And then we call that value f of c, that height, that summit, that actual height, the absolute maximum value. Sometimes I refer to this as the global maximum or the global maximum value. They're both interchangeable because it means out of the whole the possible values, this is the absolute highest the function gets. The function never creeps higher than that particular value. And the location of that is called the absolute maximum. Can you guess what the absolute minimum is? I think you can. Absolute minimum, same thing, but now the rock bottom lowest one, right? So the absolute minimum is um, a value for x, let's call it c, so that f of c is the absolute lowest the function ever gets for every single x. Every single one. Can't get any lower than that. And so we call that value of the function at c the absolute minimum value, or sometimes the global minimum, the global uh, minimum value. 